So we all know KSI versus Logan Paul 2 happening November the 9th. And we all know the KSI has been bulking up, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> today we're gonna talk about why he bulked up, how it works, how calorie deficits and surpluses work in general, and why JJ actually bulked up for this fight. The fight is almost here, so we have no time to waste. And let's kind of ignore the fact that uh, JJ himself hired me as a propaganda machine a little bit to hide the fact that she's kind of fat, you know? Oh, I love you, JJ. I'm just kidding around. So what does bulking and what does cutting actually mean? The first thing that you have to know is that on a daily basis, our bodies need an X amount of calories a day to function. Walk, you have to be able to breathe, talk, do your shit, wank. Now for every person, this varies. This varies on a couple things. Weight, height, age, and your daily activity. Meaning, what do you do in a day? Do you work in an office job and you sit on your ass, you play video games all day, you don't do much, or are you into working out, you take a bike to your work, you walk every day for a mile or two. If you take all these things into consideration, you'll get your total amount of calories that your body needs in able to maintain its weight and function. For example, let's take JJ for example. He weighs 315 pounds, sit on his ass all day, but has some very intensive walking training and maybe gives it a go two times a day, taking up his activity, taking up his body, his weight. He needs, let's say, 3,000 calories to function. Now I know it's not JJ's actual weight. Relax, it's a joke, it's a joke. You know, bro, get in there. So now that we know that we have a caloric maintenance level, for JJ, it might be 3,000 calories. For me, it might be 2,500 calories. So what does this have to do with bulking and cutting? Now, pretty much, when you bulk up, you wanna make sure you're above that caloric maintenance level, and when you kinda of cut down, you are below that caloric maintenance level. Over, you gain, under, you lose weight. It's pretty much simple like that. If we talk about a bulk, usually, depending on the size of the bulk and how fast you wanna do it, you take about 300 to 500 calories over your caloric maintenance level, and you use that to bulk up. Now, usually people bulk up if they wanna add some more muscle mass to their frame. You're gonna gain some fat and some muscle, usually when you bulk up. In JJ's case, I'm assuming that's what he did too. He wanted to build up some more muscle mass so he can be bigger and stronger on the second fight. When it comes to bulking, you're also gonna add some body fat, so that's why the memes came out and had JJ looking like this, you know? Although it's not necessary to be in a caloric surplus to be above that maintenance level in order to gain muscle mass, it is usually preferred because... I, um, yeah. could I get a cheeseburger? Yeah. And another cheeseburger? Well, yeah, of course, it is preferred because of that. But also, when you're in a gym and you are eating enough calories and even above that, all the energy stored that it's over that maintenance level to burn through your body, so your performance in a gym usually goes up. Now, I just mentioned that you don't have to be in a surplus to order to gain muscle mass. If you are eating your caloric maintenance level, but you're also eating a sufficient amount of proteins and you are working out in a gym using progressive overload, you can still gain muscle mass. Now let's talk cutting, because JJ bulked up and now he's getting ready for the fight, which means he has to slim down, but keep the muscle mass that he tried to gain on this bulk as much as possible. When talking about cutting, you have two general things you could do. You can either cut body mass or you can cut body fat. The one obviously means when you cut body fat, you're gonna try to maintain as much muscle mass as possible. If you're trying to just cut down body mass, just means losing weight in general, you're not gonna be so focused on the muscle loss. So in order to lose body mass or body fat, you have to be in a caloric deficit, which means you are not eating enough for your body to maintain itself, so it will lose weight slowly. Now, like I said, there's two different things, losing body fat and losing body mass. Now you ask Jasper, what's the difference and how do I do the one or the other? So our calories are made up of macros. Now you have four macros and we're not gonna talk about one, which is alcohol, because it's not very important right now. We're gonna talk about proteins, carbs, and fat. Protein and four carbs each are worth four calories per gram, for fats are nine calories per gram. Hence why when you eat a lot of fatty foods, you, you have a bigger chance of gaining weight because it's so dense and has a lot of calories. For example, a Big Mac that is about this big has about 600 calories and about this amount of rice might have 300 calories. Now, it's very important to take into account the proportions between the protein, carbs, and fats when you're going into your calorie deficit. Simply put, if you wanna lose body fat, so you wanna maintain your muscle, 
You have to eat enough proteins so your body can sustain that muscle mass while still keeping training going to stimulate the muscle to not lose its size. On the other hand, when you wanna lose body mass, it is less important to have a high amount of protein to keep the muscle mass, which you're not really trying to keep. Now let's take a look at the case out of the Logan fight because this fight will be a cruiser weight, which means 90.7 kg maximum weight, which is 200 pounds for all you Americans out there. At the first fight, JJ weighed in at 84.9 kgs, which is almost six kilograms under the maximum weight limit of this fight. Meanwhile, Logan weighed in at 86 flat, which means Logan already had a weight advantage on him. So as I said before, JJ has about six kilos of muscle mass to gain in order to make the maximum cruiser weight weight limit, which means there's a lot of room for more strength, more power punches, and just more muscle mass and leaner, bigger body in general. Now, this means he bulked up not only to enjoy nice food and just have a time off boxing, but also to gain some muscle mass so his frame will be bigger come fight night. So first up, you bulk up, right? You gain the muscle mass, you feel great in the gym, you feel big and strong. You have all the calories in your body, all the energy that you can get into your training to gain as much muscle size as possible in the time that you have. After that, obviously there has to be a turning point where you wanna be, not only you wanna be big, but you wanna be lean, in shape and ready for fight night because it's very, very important to be in great shape. So the next step for JJ was, is to cut down body fat, not body mass, because he wants to obviously maintain that muscle mass to maintain the strength and power that he possesses in his punch. Now, when talking about cutting and about the calories and the proportion between protein, carbs, and fats, is usually that a lot of people say is about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. I don't know JJ's exact weight, but I'm assuming he's pretty big and maybe let's say he's 205. He weighs 205 pounds. Usually a rule of thumb is you take about one gram of protein per pound of body weight, which means he has to consume around 200 grams of protein each day, which means that already makes up 800 calories of his diet. Usually when I have clients cut down, I usually cut down the fats and have as much carbs as possible because carbs generally gives you a lot of energy. So when people cut down, I see the protein, make sure they're good enough so they maintain their muscle mass and then also, have a kind of high carb, low fat diet because I prefer carbs over fats. For my diet, fats make me feel a little bit sluggish, carbs make me feel alive. So obviously now we know why JJ did what he did, bulked up, looked big, got made fun of a lot. I mean, it's a meme, kind of funny, let's be honest, JJ. But he did it for a reason and it's a good reason as well because fight night is gonna be sick and happening and he has to be in his best shape of his life. Last time, you know, he needs a little extra detail to get the draw going his way, you know? So one last thing I want to mention is about keto diets and vegetarian diets and all these other diets that people be. All diets can work, but all diets can fail as well. In my opinion, how I look at it is keto diet usually works not because you cut out bread and pasta, it's because you cut out calories. The one rule that you always have to follow is Where's my caloric maintenance level? Am I over it or am I under it? If your caloric maintenance level is of 2,500 calories and you're eating 2,700 in forms of keto diet, you will still not lose weight. People go for my coaching, I always tell them, please look at longevity. What's a lifestyle, what's a diet that you can sustain for a long period of time instead of cutting out as much food as you can, not enjoy it, hate it, and be done after four weeks, and then you rebound because you will just eat everything that you want to eat instead of, you know, slowly but surely, on a long process, lose the weight you don't wanna lose. Anyways, let's stop talking about diets, bulking and cutting. I'm excited for KSI for Logan Ball 2. Now you know why KSI bulked up and cut down for the fight. Hope you enjoy it. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, ring the notification bell and everything. If I do offer my online coaching, go to my website in the description, there's online coaching there. It's quite cheap uh, and a lot to help. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. My name is Jasper and I am out. Yeet.